So on our warm up today, um, first of all, just uh, wanted to mention these yellow sheets are not to be taken home. Again, they are for here to stay here that you can use when we do these constructions. And so we're getting some more practice today constructing what it says on our warm up. So let's do this real quick. Okay, after the warm up, please ask. After the warm up. So on our warm up, it says draw a straight line and a point like below. Before that, it says write today's date. So let's go ahead and do that. Today's date is 10 3 17, right? And then we want to do what it says. It's pictured on the board, but we want to do it ourselves. Draw yourself any old line and a point kind of far away from it, right? So if you hadn't done that yet, you should have, but there it is, okay? So you got a line, you got a point, and if you remember from these yellow notes, we're just going to follow it step by step. Uh, and so on that first step, what does it say to do? Draw a line, okay? So you're drawing a line from this point, well, beyond this point. So it goes through the point and through the line, okay? So make sure it goes beyond the, the point as well. Okay? Yeah, that's touch the line, touch the point, goes through both. Okay? Then, our second step on the yellow sheet, it tells us to measure about halfway. Okay? Alright, so take your compass, put it about halfway, like that, and then I want you to make an arc that touches both lines. Okay? So, again, measuring about halfway, you want to take it like this, putting your point at that intersection, and make yourself an arc that goes through both lines. Okay? It's, a, it's about halfway. And then, don't move your compass as measurement. You want to... You want to bring it down to this point. And make sure you put the pointy part on that point. Okay? So then you're going to make the same exact arc. You should have definitely what I have on my page. So does everyone have a line and a point? Let's see it then. All right. Come on. You can do it. It's easy to catch up. Okay? So you draw a line. You got that point. Then you draw a line through them both. Okay. And then you put the arc about halfway, make the same arc on both. It's very important that this second arc goes long enough. Okay? Now here's the critical step where some people get lost. Don't get lost, right? So you're going to actually change your compass. It's going to change, right? You're going to have to measure from here to here. And you want to measure it as accurately as you can so that way you can make a uh, parallel line. So go ahead and I'd do it straight up and down. Put your point on one. Put your pencil on the other. Okay. So I took this measurement and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go all the way over to this intersection and make a mark. So again, this measurement right here moved all the way down here and I make that mark. Okay. So I am definitely looking for three arc marks, okay? Show me you can do this, please. I should see this line, that point, second line, and then these three arcs. Your last step is to draw a line through that intersection, okay? So it'll look like this. From this point, through that intersection right there. And that's about the best one I've done today. My other three were pretty bad. And that one's still not perfect, okay? So, what did I do? Drew a line, measured halfway, drew my two arcs, drew my second arc, drew my line through it, and then I had parallel lines, okay? you got to be able to do that on your next assignment. And for now, we're going to start on some notes on proofs. During this unit, unit two, we have to do parallel proofs and 
The weird part about that is that we actually don't start teaching you about proofs until Unit 3, which is weird because we're in Unit 2. So in my opinion, that's out of order. But I'm going to show you some simplified proofs on parallel lines for this unit. And then we'll apply that when we get to real proofs in Unit 3. Uh, but if this seems foreign and weird, it's because it is foreign and weird. But follow with me. I'll try to make it as uh, simple as I can. So every time we do a proof, we're always starting with something that is given. And then we're trying to prove something that says prove. Okay. Now, let me give you the easiest part of proofs. Ready? Step one is always given. So I'm going to draw a little arrow. This always goes here. You always start with what's given. Okay? So, what does this little symbol right here mean? Oh, looks like a sideways equal sign. It means parallel. Okay? So what's given is that K is parallel to L. So guess what we're going to write for step one? K is parallel to L. All right? So step one, easy. No big deal, right? Now, what's my reason? How do I know that's true? Off to the right is where we write our reasons. Okay? And it's already filled in for you. It is given. Okay? So step one is always given, and it's whatever they give you. Moving on from there. What are we trying to prove? So we are trying to prove that 6 is supplementary to 7. So if I look at my diagram, 6 is an obtuse angle, 7 is an acute angle. We're told that these are parallel lines. So here's the question. Are they supplementary? Do they add up to 180? Well, one's obtuse, one's acute. It could be. I mean, it kind of looks like they might be. But it doesn't matter what we think or what we assume. It has to be proven. So here's a way to prove it. All right? Now, the second step is given. Right here, it says 6 is congruent to 8. So if I look at my picture, 6 and angle 8, those are a certain angle relationship we talked about. What do you call 6 and 8? One's on the outside, one's on the inside. They're both on the same side of the transversal. Those are called corresponding angles. Remember that from yesterday, kind of weird stuff, if one's out or one's in. So guess what the reason for these being congruent is? They are corresponding angles. So we are using what we should know about angle relationships in this proof. We're just filling stuff in that we know. Corresponding angles. Now, step three is blank. How would we know what to put for step three? Well, let's think about this. I'm trying to show that six is supplementary to seven. So I just showed 6 is congruent to 8, so I'm going to use that angle 8, and I'm trying to get something that's supplementary. So if you look at your reasoning on step 3, it says definition of a linear pair, supplementary. So i got to use angle 8. What is a supplementary linear pair to angle 8? So if you're looking over here, I'll do this in uh, pink. Angle 8, what's right next to it that makes a linear pair? The very angle that I need to prove, angle 7. So guess what? Angle 8 and angle 7, they're not equal. They're a linear pair. So don't put congruent. How do I show that they're a linear pair or supplementary? I need to do plus angle 7 equals 180. Okay? It is a statement that I'm making about the angle that I just had and the angle I need to get, 8 and 7, add up to 180 because I see they make a straight line. Okay? Now, check this out. I'm trying to prove 6 and 7 are supplementary, right? Now, if 6 is congruent to 8 and 8 is in this statement, can't I replace this 8 with 6 if they're the same exact thing? Thank you. Okay, so does that, does that make sense? Like, I know they're the same, so I can just replace. Or what's another word for replace? Substitute, right? Substitution. 
So that's what I'm going to do for step four. I'm going to replace angle eight with angle six because I know they are congruent. They're corresponding. So let's replace eight with six. Bring everything else down. All I did was replace angle eight with angle six by substitution. Okay. So that's angle six plus angle seven equals 180. And now, for the last step, isn't these two angles adding up to 180 the same thing as being supplementary? Yes. How do I know that? Well, that's the definition of supplementary. So my last step, my last reason, that's the definition of supplementary. So, we successfully proved that, given K is parallel to L, we proved that angle 6 and angle 7 are supplementary. Okay, so let's do number 2. Number 2 is going to be a little bit easier than number 1, okay? Because number 2 has one less step, and we're proving congruence, okay? So stick with me as we go through on number 2. On number two, what's my first step always going to be? Given, right? With enthusiasm. Given, right? So, step one's always given. So, what am I going to write right here? K parallel to L. Okay. Now, let's notice what I'm trying to prove here. I'm trying to prove four is congruent to five using angle two. Okay. Now, hopefully, you can notice four and five. We should know they're already congruent because they're alternate interior angles, right? But I want you to use angle 2 to prove that. So notice, step 2 and 3 are both using angle 2, like I said. So let's think about each of these steps. How do I know angle 2 is congruent to angle 4? So here's 2, and here's 4. What kind of angles are those? Corresponding angles. Let's fill that in on number two. And then how do I know that two is congruent to five? What do you call them when they're across from each other like that? Ver I heard someone say it. Vertical angles. That's from unit one. So any intersection when they're across from each other, those are vertical angles. And now, I have two statements. Now, I want everyone's Eyes open, heads up, please. So, again, if 2 is congruent to 4, and 2 is congruent to 5, what do I know about 4 and 5? They're congruent. Think about it this way. Check it out. 4 and 2 are congruent, right? So if I wrote it like this, whoops, and then I know 2 is congruent to 5, do you see this chain? 4 is congruent to 2, 2 is congruent to 5. If I do a little like leapfrog, bunny hop, whatever, isn't 4 going to be congruent to 5 because these are all the same thing? Okay, so what do you call it when you kind of skip over one to get to the third thing? Well, it tells us on our fourth step. That's called transitive property. Okay, so that's what we're basically going to do. Using step 2 and 3, what I know is congruent to angle 2. I know angle 4 has to be congruent to angle 5. And isn't that what I'm trying to prove anyways, right? So 4 is congruent to 5 because of the transitive property. Make sure on number 4, there, there was a typo on the original uh, assignment, if you have that one. It originally said vertical angles on number 4, step 2's reason. Cross that out, put corresponding angles. It's the reason that's supposed to be for step two on number four, bet. So on number four, so on number three, it was just like number one from the other page. You had to tell me what was given, tell me which were alternate exterior angles using what you're trying to prove, go through that. And then on number four, that one's similar to number two from the front side and you're kind of doing that skip over method that's called the transitive 
property of congruence. Don't forget step three is vertical angles.